it's Wednesday and we get out of church a little late tonight. So I just want to give everybody a few more minutes to get on. But let me tell you, God has given me a word. I mean, like a word for you. And it's an encouraging word. I hope it will be. Um, so I want to encourage you tonight on prayer and the power of the power of prayer. I want to read a couple of scriptures to you real quick. Let me get my Bible out. Some of you guys have been asking me what kind of Bible I have, and I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see it. It's called the Inspire Bible. It's kind of girly, but I love my Inspire Bible. And I get to, um, I can color in it, but I mark it up a lot because I study a lot in it. You see that? It's the New Living Translation. It's the one that I read from. I don't, I have a study Bible where I study the Greek and Hebrew. Um, but this one, I just like the translation and um, I like the way it, it puts it, you know. Um, the word is so powerful and sometimes we just need it in a way where we could really, really understand it. So this is the word I have for you tonight. 1 John 5 and 14. And this is the confidence we have toward him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. I want somebody to put in the comments, anything. What does anything mean? Anything. And the key is if we ask it according to his will. Remember what Jesus said that when we pray, we should pray like this. Lord, let thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. So there are things going on here on earth. There's activity here. There is chaos here there's disappointment here can i get a witness anybody been disappointed this week anybody been through some stuff it's only wednesday and it feels like friday already you know there's things going on here on earth but let me tell you there is activity in heaven there is power in heaven and the word says that jesus is always interceding for you and that our prayers are going up to heaven. So if Jesus thought it was so important to say this, that he said, listen, if you pray according to my will, whatever you ask, I will hear from you and I will respond to you and I will give you what you are asking for. So I have a very important question for you. What are you needing? What are you asking God for? And um, do you know what the will of heaven is. See, and this is this is what I want to try to get the point across, that we look through the lens of earth. We, we pray from earth to heaven instead of heaven to earth. We're always praying according by what we see here and not by what we see here and through the word of God and through the lens of Jesus. And what we need to do is come in agreement with what Jesus is praying. So if you could take a moment and realize that Jesus is interceding for you, and if you could sit beside him and hear him pray over your life or over that person that you've been praying for, what would he be saying? Listen to this. In Revelation 4, John was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Remember, he was in the spirit and then the Lord came upon him and he said to John, come up here and I will show you things. See, God can't show you things if your mind is always down here on earth and all you see is the trouble that's here on earth and all you can see is what you can see. You have got to take your thoughts up. You've got to take your prayer up. You got to take your mind up. And you may be saying, oh, well, that sounds good, but how do I do that? How do I do that? Well, it's simple. When you pray, you have to see what you are praying for. You have to agree with the word of God and what the word says about your situation. So that means you have to read the word. You have to know what it says. Get this, Matthew 18, 19 through 20. It says, where there are two or three, wherever there are two or three people that agree 
on earth about anything. This is the important word I want to get across to you. You have to agree and you got to find two people, at least two. I'm right here. I'm one of them. And um, me and you, we two people right here. All right, so we can agree together and you can grab one more. If you got your husband in the room with you, grab him and say, hey, let's agree on one thing. What is it that you need to agree on on earth? And he says, if you agree that, and remember now, we're praying the will of heaven. If Jesus, if you could hear him praying over your life, what would he be saying? What would he be praying over your life? So he's, the word says right here, now, if we agree about anything on earth, it will be done by our Father who is in heaven, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. Listen, it looks like we have maybe 11 people on here right now, according to what Facebook is telling me. And if we all were coming together in the name of Jesus, he is here, even right here through this Facebook Live. The Lord is with us, and we have to agree. Now, this is what you have to do now. If you're going to agree with Jesus and agree with the Word and agree with the will of heaven like Jesus told us to, that means you have to disagree with some things that are happening down here on earth. Okay? So what has the enemy been telling you all week? you got to disagree with it. Has he been telling you that God doesn't hear your prayers? Has he been telling you that um, you don't have what it takes to reach your destiny? Has he been telling you you don't have enough money? Has he been showing you, um, you know, a picture that looks fearful? And has he been showing you, you know, I don't know about you, but fear can paint a picture for you. Some of you have been praying for certain things. Maybe it's a baby. Maybe you've been praying for your spouse. Maybe you've been praying over your finances. Maybe there's a prodigal son or daughter that you've been praying over. So in order to agree with what God is saying about that certain thing that you are praying for, you have to disagree with the enemy and the lies that he's been telling you. Woo! That will preach right there. Somebody say this in the comments. I disagree with the enemy and all of his lies. Go ahead and, and put that in the comments and say it out loud. I want you just to get up. I want you to run around the house right now. <laughs> I am serious. I want you to get excited because God is about to move upon your life. God is about to answer some prayers for you. But before he answers these prayers, you got to disagree with what the enemy is saying. And when you pray, you tell him, no devil, you're a liar. I disagree. I disagree with the sickness. I disagree with my finances. I disagree with my emotions and what I'm feeling right now because they're negative or, or I'm feeling lonely or whatever they are. You have to disagree with the enemy. Um, maybe did you receive a bad report? You know, did you, um, have you, Whatever your report's been, whatever the news has been, you know, did you get a letter in the mail that was not what you expected? Did something happen that you weren't? Disagree with the enemy and start agreeing with God's word of what God says over you. Because now the word is saying this, if you agree here on earth, that means, okay, God, all of your promises are yes and amen. Whatever the word, gosh, let me show you again. This is my word, okay? You see it? Whatever the word says about me, I am who the word of God says I am, and I can do what it says I can do. I sound like Joel Osteen, don't I? But it's the truth. If the word of God says it, then I can become it, and I have to agree with it, okay? So let's put in those comments. Thank you, Donna. I was just about to say that. I agree with the word of God. You know why? Because the, it's the inspired word of God. It's inspired. It is alive and it is powerful. So we have to begin to agree with God. His promises are yes and amen. So I'm going to tell you a story of something that happened today, okay? Um, you know, you, you guys know that I'm doing a podcast. And the podcast that I'm doing in particular 
has the potential to reach a lot of people, but I had to pay a lot of money to get it done. All of my speaking engagements got canceled this year because of uh, the pandemic and because of the, um, you know, COVID. So I haven't been able to go into the schools. I haven't been able to give away t-shirts and do the campaign like I've always wanted to do and how God had been speaking me to do it. So I had to find another way to get the word out. So I started a, a podcast. And so it comes out every Monday at five o'clock in the morning. So I wanna encourage you guys to go on and subscribe to it, rate and review all that. It's gonna help me and it's gonna help spread the gospel. And not only that, we're spreading good news to get the word out about using your voice to overcome any obstacle of darkness and especially suicide, rape, sexual abuse, all those kind of things. We're talking about real life stories, right? But guess what? It cost me $6,000 and I didn't have $6,000. I had $100 in my Janet Swanson Ministries account, 100. Somebody say that with me, I, I, $100. You don't have to put it in there, but just say, I had $100. I signed a contract that I would pay $6,000 for this podcast. Well, they were gonna let me, you know, make payments for twelve hundred dollars a month. I was like, okay, let's make twelve hundred. I'm, I'm still only have a hundred dollars in the bank. I said, God, I am gonna trust you with this. I am gonna trust you. And miraculously, God just came through. People just started helping me out. Um, I didn't ask. I asked a few people, you know, like if they wanted to donate, that if they wanted to, you know, give towards something, they could give toward this. It would be great because I have all these plans and these things I want to do, and we can all do it together and be on board together. But, um, and then we had this plan. We thought, well, let's do this, 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 and this. And, and if we can get this plan, then we can get all these donors, and then we can do all these plans that we have. But all of that fell through. All of my, my plans fell through and it wasn't happening, and it looked like it wasn't gonna happen. And, and then I heard the Lord say, depend on me, I will provide for you. I will supply all of your needs. And someone sent me a song today called Protector and Provider. And the Lord said, I told you, I told you I was gonna be your protector and your provider. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do whatever you need me to do, just trust me. And I said, well, Lord, I don't have this next $1,200. I don't know where it's gonna come from, but you do. And and I, I said, and he said, cancel the other plans. Don't even do that other thing that you were thinking about and trust me. And I said, okay, I'm gonna do it. So I was like, I don't know where it's gonna come from, God, but I know that you're gonna come through for me. I know that you're gonna do it. So I began to pray about it. I began to agree with Jesus because I could picture him in heaven interceding and praying over my life. Now, I want you to grab a hold of this because you can do this too. If you can imagine what Jesus is praying for you and what he is saying over you and that you would accept that and not try to rationalize it. Because when God says something, it always takes faith for it to happen and to come through and you have to believe him for it. So I'm like down to zero dollars now. I just paid for last month's and it was due and it just came out. So now I'm as my flesh, I'm starting to worry about next month because I only have one more and it's $1,200, right? Well, it might as well be, you know, $12,000. You know, if you get $100 in the bank, it, it is what it is, right? So. I just said, you know, God, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to praise you for the answer is on the way. I know that you're going to provide. I just know it. I feel it. I agree with your word. I disagree with what the enemy is saying because the enemy has been telling me to quit, to fold it up, forget about One Voice Ministries, forget about speaking, forget about Facebook Live, forget about everything. And, you know, I confessed this to you a few days ago. And, and you guys have been encouraging me. Thank you, thank you. I just really, really appreciate that. And the Lord, I've been trying to encourage myself and we're inspiring one another. And so, you know, I just like, okay, God, thank you so much. I'm just gonna believe you, believe you. Guess what? Today, I went to the Bible study. I have not told anybody about this need, about what, I, what the next step was. The Lord just told me, he said, I'm gonna provide for you. 
some random lady just walks up to me today and God bless her soul. Thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful woman of God. She, not knowing anything about the need, she just says to you, hey, have you gone into the schools lately? Are you, have you been able to do anything? I'm like, no, they canceled everything. I haven't been able to do anything in the school system and I really long to do it, but I have started this podcast and she goes, okay, well, what do you need? I'm like, is that a question? Because I have a need, but it's a big need. I mean, it's not that big of a need, but it's big to me, right? She goes, yeah, just tell me what you need. And I said, well, I need $1,200 to pay the, for this next podcast. And then I began to tell her what the podcast is. And she goes, i tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and give you half of it. And I'm going to give it to you in a couple of weeks, but you can go ahead and plan on for half of it. And we're going to believe God for the rest. And I was like, okay. So just like that, God provided. And she said, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to make sure this is, this is going to happen for you. I want to tell you, I could, I was so shocked because I was not expecting it. I was not expecting God to come through that fast. But let me tell you, I got out of my pity party. I stopped agreeing with the enemy because the enemy said, quit, give up. Don't even do anything else. You're not making a difference. One voice is not doing anything. You might as well just fold in, you know, throw in the towel, just fold it up and just quit and walk away. But God came through and I just read to you in the word of God where he says, listen, if you pray according to the will of God, that means if your heart is in sync with the heart of Jesus and you're praying the same things that he's praying over your life and you can imagine it and picture it and take your thoughts up and pray from a place of abundance instead of a place of lack. See, before when you pray from a place of lack, then all you see is your need. You know, like, I need this, God, I need you to come through. But when you pray from a place of abundance, you already see the answer and you see the provision and you begin to thank God for it. And that's where your words come in and you speak life over your situation. You use the word of God. You hear my dogs, they're upset that they're not in my room. Um, you use the word of God as your foundation and that's what you come in agreement with. So I wanna ask you tonight, what do you need from God? Do you need healing in your body? Do you need a financial blessing? Does your marriage need healing? Does, is there a relationship that needs to be healed? Do you have a prodigal son or a daughter that needs to be healed? Do you have some brokenness in your life? Has your heart been broken? Do you feel lonely? Have you been praying for a certain thing? Maybe you're praying for a spouse or maybe you're praying over your career or maybe you've lost a career and you've had a loss, you know, this whole year, you just feel like it's been a loss. I feel like now that if you would find the strength, shake off that heaviness, shake off that negativity, shake off those heavy bands and begin to disagree with the enemy and disagree with the lies and begin to agree with God. The moment you begin to agree with God is the moment that miracles can happen in your life. Can you picture that miracle right now? Can you see it in your heart? Do you think that God is able to do it? Because I believe he can do anything. Now, all you need to do is say, God, what are you praying over me? What are you saying over me? And sometimes you just need to close your eyes and picture Jesus standing before you and listen to what he is saying. If you can imagine anything positive being spoken over your life, I want you to know that that's what Jesus is doing. He is speaking positive things over your life. The word of God says that he knows the plans that he has for you. He has designs over your life. He has a will for your life. He has blessings for you, you know? He has good plans. He has a hope 
for you. He has a future for you. So if you can imagine him saying anything and him speaking anything over you, what would he be saying to you right now? What would Jesus be saying over you? And then all you have to do is come in agreement with what Jesus is saying about your life and agree with the word of God. The Bible says, yes, he wants to heal you. Yes, he wants to restore you. Yes, he wants to give you back everything that the enemy has stolen from you. Yes, there is restoration. Yes, he wants to rebuild your life. Yes, he wants to touch your mind. Yes, he wants to touch your marriage and your family. Yes, yes, the answer is yes over your life. Yes, he loves you. There is nothing that can separate you from the love of God. Absolutely nothing. Well, hey, oh, she just gave me some kisses. You feel it too, darling, I know. My goodness, she just gave me all kind of sugar. There is nothing that can separate you from the love of God. That was Basil, and she loves me too. And I want you, I want to leave you with this word tonight that you are so loved and the plans that God has for you are good. Can you um, type that in? His plans for me in the comments, his plans for me are good. So I will believe you, God. Shake off that heaviness, shake off that uh, negativity, resist it. The Bible says resist it, resist him, the devil, and he will flee. And here's another word, ignore the voice of the enemy. Just ignore it. And eventually he'll get tired because you're not listening. Have you ever tried to talk to somebody and they're not listening and eventually you just stop talking? Yeah, I've been there. I've tried to, to have a conversation with people before and they're not, they're not listening. So I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna quit talking. That's the way it is with the enemy. The moment you stop listening to him, he's just gonna go away and find somebody else that will listen. I don't know about you, but I don't wanna be that person that's listening to the enemy. I wanna listen to God because there's nothing more confusing than when you're trying to hear God's voice and you're hearing the voice of the enemy because they contradict each other. So, Resist the enemy and he will leave you alone. Ignore him and he will leave you alone. And just believe God. You know, come in agreement. I agree with the will of heaven over my life. And I want you to say this prayer with me. Dear Father, I come in agreement. And you can just repeat after me if you want to right there where you're at. Just say that loud. Dear Father, I come in agreement with your word. Forgive me for disagreeing with you and agreeing with the enemy and agreeing with my circumstances. I repent, Father, and I ask you, Lord, just to bend my heart toward you that I can believe you for a miracle. I believe, God, there is nothing too hard for you. And Lord, your word says, that if I come to you and I agree with your word and I get two or three people with me to agree on this, that there is nothing that you would not do for me. So Father, I come in agreement with your plans over my life in Jesus' name, amen. Now, I feel like somebody's gonna receive a miracle. I don't know who it's gonna be, but I want to encourage you, stay with me. This is day 10. We have 20 more days. And I am believing at the end of this 20 days that there's gonna be a shifting. I am believing that there's going to be, I meant to say the end of the 30 days, but we have 20 more to go. I believe there's gonna be a shifting in your life and that you're gonna see God do something magnificent and wonderful. There's going to be a turning around and you're going to see a miracle or you're going to see God answer your prayers because you know what we're doing? We're encouraging each other in the Lord and we're agreeing with the word of God in the book of Acts. It says that they encouraged each other in the Lord every day. 
And you guys, you're so good to me. Like when I felt like quitting and I told you this last time, um, I had a few of you guys to get on here and say, no, don't quit, don't quit. Let me tell you what you've done for me and what this word has done for me. And I'm like, it's just what I needed to hear. So you've encouraged me and we're encouraging one another. That's what this Christian life is all about. That we, we encourage one another and we strengthen one another. That's what the Bible says. And now here we are coming in agreement together where two or three are gathered. Here we are gathered again. We're in agreement that whatever you're asking God for, but you got to listen. You got to listen to heaven. Listen to how Jesus is praying over you and then come in agreement with what he is saying. And I am feeling at the end of this 30 days, which we have 20 more days to go, I want you to stick with me, that we're going to see something significantly change in your life. I mean, it's going to be so significant that you're going to know that it's God and there's going to be a shifting. I am praying that prodigal sons and prodigal daughters are coming home. I'm praying that marriages are restored. I'm praying that your body will be healed. I am praying that your finances will be healed. And I am praying that your broken heart will be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. You enjoy the word tonight. Um, also, if you're just coming on here and you're going to go back and listen to it, let me know that if you're doing a replay, because I like to know those things. And if this word has ministered to you, I want you to share it with someone and ask them to join us tomorrow night for prayer. And um, I may, I think I may have uh, my husband is going to come on with us because God's been stirring him up and he's got a word too. Um, but he and Reed, they're just so shy. I can't get them to come on here and do this Facebook Live with me, but I think I'm going to talk him into it. So maybe tomorrow night you can join me and Pastor Carrie. So pray. Let's come in agreement <laughs> that he will come with me and give us a word together because we're going to inspire each other. We're going to encourage each other and speak life over each other. Aren't you tired of people speaking negativity? Aren't you tired of this negative world? Let's speak life over one another. Let's say something good. Do something good. I want to challenge you. Do something good for somebody tomorrow. Whatever it is, do a good deed. Good, you know, buy a card for somebody. Bring somebody some coffee. Do something good for somebody. It's going to make you feel better. All right? Let's stay encouraged. Let's do this together. Hey, we're in this together, you guys. We are the body of Christ. We are brothers and sisters. I love you, and I'll see you tomorrow night. Okay? Bye.